The Bank of Canada is expected to cut rates again on this Wednesday meeting, but after Friday's jobs report, how big of a cut could we get? Joining us now to discuss, James Marple, Senior Economist with TD. Always great to have you on the program. Thank you. Great to be here. It's been an interesting couple of weeks heading into this decision where there was a lot of thought that maybe they can slow the pace to give us a quarter point, but we've had some economic data since then. That'll be that jobs uh, situation. Break that down for us and how it could change your thinking. Sure. Well, it was a, a very interesting jobs report. I mean, on the one hand, 50,000 jobs created, uh, but that came alongside the strongest labor force growth really we've seen outside of the, the strangeness of the pandemic period, 183,000 people added to, to payrolls. And with that, you got a 0.3 percentage point increase uh, in the unemployment rate. And uh, that increase in the unemployment rate to 6.8% uh, really has driven expectations that the uh, Bank of Canada could deliver on another 50 basis point cut, of course, after the first one in, uh, in October. Uh, you know, it, it is going to be a close call. Uh, obviously, you know, the tea leaves uh, harder to read and, and, and even uh, the forecast harder given uh, the events in the United States. But, uh, you know, there are some reasons to think the Canadian economy actually is, is doing okay. Um, certainly, uh, the Q4 GDP number uh, came in a bit weak, but underlying that, consumer spending growth of 3.7% annualized. We've seen uh, the housing market already look like it is uh, reviving with a, an improvement in sales uh, over the last few months. Uh, you know, even in the near term, we have the, the mortgage rules uh, changes coming that should uh, give a little bit more boost there. And, and of course, these are the fiscal announcements that we've had from the federal government in terms of the GST uh, break and uh, potentially, you know, checks coming from Ontario and maybe the federal government, which should be supportive of spending. So, I mean, all of that suggests that the, the Bank of Canada could, uh, you know, it, it's maintained this bias to continue cutting rates, but could uh, ratchet down to a 25 basis point cut. Uh, if they do end up going 50, it will be on the view that the unemployment rate really is indicating an economy that is operating with some excess supply uh, that they expect to continue to be disinflationary and they want to get ahead of it. And, you know, if they're thinking about cutting in the future, they just follow up with the 50 with another 50 and get to what is close to their neutral range uh, at 3.25% uh, when one fell swoop. That's what I find so interesting about the debate over whether it's a 25 or a 50, because we, we've been on a rate cutting cycle since the summer now. We know they want to get to a certain point. It's all, I guess, about the urgency now, whether they feel the urgency. A 50 basis points suggest urgency. Could that send the wrong message to, to well, Canadians as well about the state of things? Well, it may. I mean, you know, we also had an inflation report that came in a bit surprising, a surprise certainly higher than expected. The core rate of inflation, uh, the Bank of Canada's own measures backed up. They're not at the 2% range. I mean, at 2.6%, they, they went up 0.2 percentage points. So, you know, we, we may not quite be fully out of, uh, out of the woods yet. I mean, they want to get uh, inflation obviously back to their 2%. And, and there is uh, some uh, debate even about what the labor market's indicating, of course, given the strength we've had in population growth uh, and in, you know, the, the contribution from non-permanent residents, which have unfortunately contributed to that rise in the unemployment rate. Uh, so, you know, I think there, there is some risk of, uh, of going a little bit too fast. Uh, in, in, in terms of uh, making sure that we do sustainably get to a 2% uh, rate of inflation. Now, this uh, news is just coming across. Not that we know what's going to be in the document. We've been waiting for a fiscal update. I just, I just think in terms of monetary policy, and they, they have an idea of what you know they're doing on the fiscal policy side. Yeah. And so it appears that on December 16th, we are going to get an update from the federal government in Ottawa. A fiscal update will come before the holidays. Depending on what's in that document, I imagine going into 2025, the Bank of Canada either has to take that into account or say, well, it really won't matter for us at all. Well, yeah, and it, it could. I mean, if we do get any kind of uh, fiscal announcements in terms of stimulus, we've had a little bit that. I, I would say it's been more uh, on the margin, but uh, the, the federal government does have, you know, potentially some fiscal space. I mean, deficits are, are relatively small, certainly relative to where they are stateside, um, and, and may want to deal with some of the potential pressures coming from the potential for tariffs or any kind of uh, a geopolitical risk that they would uh, want to get in front of. All right, so that's something we need to watch for next week. We just got that information that we're going to get a fiscal update on December the 16th. As we say goodbye to 2024, because there's only a couple of weeks left, and we head into 2025, well, what do we think about the Canadian economy? What's it going to look like next year? Sure, well, and a lot of uncertainties, obviously, but uh, if you look at where the data's come in uh, just recently, 
I mean, obviously the, the GDP report was relatively soft for Q3, uh, but under, under it was a pretty strong, as I mentioned, momentum in consumer spending, which has been a weak point for the Canadian economy. Uh, I think we will see some improvement in per capita spending, which has been weak in part reflecting that strong population growth. But we should get that improving, especially as now, as, as mentioned, we've had, we'll probably will have something like 175 basis points in rate cuts a, as the year starts. And we've seen that uh, in interest rate sensitive sectors of the economy in terms of a rebound in home sales. Uh, I think that should continue into next year. And, and those two impetuses, getting a little more consumer spending and getting a, a rebound in housing activity, I think should be enough to uh, to provide for a pretty solid rate of growth. I mean, we're not talking gangbuster growth, but certainly a continuation. The unemployment rate, which, you know, at 6.8%, uh, with some of the, the changes that we expect to get on population and on uh, non-permanent residents, we're probably at a peak or close to a peak in terms of the unemployment rate. We expect that to start to turn, uh, go the other direction uh, going forward. So all of that suggests an economy that's continuing to uh, to, to move ahead. And, uh, you know, that all, of course, anticipating no major shocks coming from uh, the potential for, for tariffs or anything like that. Yeah, when I think about interest rate policy that would follow on the economy uh, next year, obviously you talked about a bank that whether it's 50 basis points this week or 25, they're yeah. working their way back to what they consider neutral. Yes. Once they get to neutral, I guess then we just have to think about what does the world look like beyond that would there be a reason for them where they're no longer stimulating or trying to hold the economy back it's sort of sort of a sweet spot how long does the central bank get to sit at that sweet spot well that's that's right I mean and, and they do have the ability to obviously go down below you know they've been they have a range of 2.25 percent to 3.25 percent if we already get any kind of policy risk they obviously could uh, go below that and we also have as as mentioned some potential for for the fiscal side to be uh, supportive of growth if there is any kind of uh, negative shock. So, I mean, all of that's kind of positive given that there are a lot of uh, downside risks out there.